and then we will uh, turn it back over to our, our brothers in the mornings uh, with the next lesson study the books are in uh, will be on attitudes attitudes and in relation to uh, the heart of God's child and uh, when you really think about it uh, attitude is everything um, attitude uh, you can have all the word of God that you can desire, uh, but if your attitude is not right, um, it makes no never mind. Uh, we've been talking about, uh, for the past several weeks, uh, trying to get to the heart of understanding the truth about forgiveness. And I know forgiveness is a topic uh, that was very much needed uh, for all of us uh, because truth be told, uh, forgiveness is one of the hardest things uh, for us as children of God to be able to do. And we're just not looking at um, forgiveness from the aspect of uh, we know we're supposed to do it and so forth and so on, but we've taken this time in the past few weeks and in the next couple weeks, uh, we've taken like a sidebar from our normal routine in, in this uh, Sunday school to uh, truly focus on um, understanding forgiveness from a whole overall perspective, uh, from the perspective of being the one who offends, from the perspective of being the one who's offended uh, from the perspective of also being able to forgive yourself um, and what that encompasses as well. So up until this point, we've looked at, uh, we've asked the question, what is forgiveness? And to help us to understand what forgiveness is, we've done a few things. We've looked at what forgiveness is not. We've observed how God forgives. In observing how, in observing how God forgives, uh, we've made sure that we understand that there are two types of forgiveness. There is human forgiveness and there is divine forgiveness. Okay, there's forgiveness on the human plane between us, one another, and then there's divine forgiveness, okay? And I pray that uh, before we go on today that we all understand the difference between those two. Um, I'm recapping because y'all know me. With all you're getting, get what? Please don't come to class and, and leave class with, without a true understanding for yourself. Okay, we're not here as we talked about on yesterday in the, in the classes on yesterday. We're not here, especially in the James class, we're not here to show what we know, not here to answer all the questions and, and be in the limelight. We're here to get learning, to get an understanding. Why? So that we can truly improve our lives. So that people in the world can see that we're just, we don't just claim to, to do Christianity, we are Christians, okay? And being a Christian doesn't mean that you have a life to where uh, you don't have any struggles. We're all here because we do have struggles, because we are honest about the fact that we do have a terminal illness called sin, and we need help. And no matter what sin it is, it's sin, and we all need help with it. Is that all right? Church is not for sinless people. It's for people who recognize that they can't get their life together. Is that all right? I have a lot of people who don't want to come and be a part of the church because they feel like they got to be perfect and sinless and, and this and that. And that's the wrong idea. Okay? So, we've again, we've observed how God forgives. Okay? We've also defined... Forgiveness, the real definition of forgiveness. 
And that was important because when you look at the true definition of forgiveness, the last two aspects of that is to permit to depart and to discharge, which means for us in our human forgiveness, you can still choose to hold on to it if you want to. You don't have to, to permit it to depart. You don't have to discharge it. You can still hold on to it. But watch this. If I have followed what God has, if I have offended you, and I follow what God has told me to do in offending you, but you choose to hold on to it, I still receive divine forgiveness, and that's what counts. Is that all right? I'm, I, I apologize for what I've done to you. I can't make it up. I can't undo it. I can't change it. I can't go back 20, 30, 40 years and undo what was done, but I'm trying to make amends. Is that all right? And some of us can't forgive ourselves for things that we've done 40 years ago, but God has already forgiven us. And Satan is still holding us captive. Okay? All right. Last week we started to conclude Roman numeral two at the bottom of your handout, which is the importance and necessity of forgiveness. These are the reasons why it is necessary for us to forgive, okay? Remember we talked about, and before I get into this, does anyone need a handout? Does everyone have a handout? If you need a handout, raise your hand. And y'all got those, did I forgive my offender test, right? Did you pass? I don't think so, huh? <laughs> and I hope we looked at the bottom of those that I forgive my offender test because at the bottom was uh, also for those of us who have offended and not really come to grips with the fact that I've offended someone. Okay? Because that can work both ways now. Sometimes you can be in denial and say to yourself and deceive yourself and to think, well, I didn't do nothing wrong. That's just a problem. Well, you keep on thinking that if you want to. You will have to answer to God. Maybe not in this life, but you will answer in the next life. All right? Okay? Okay. So we were at the bottom. And before we go there, are there any comments? Are there any feedback or questions on what we've discussed thus far, do you have an understanding for yourself on everything that we've discussed? Now, help me to understand, are you holding on to something that was done to you? Okay. I was about to ask you that. Okay. Can I get with you after class on that? Because that's a whole different absolute. Okay. 
uh, that is a root of bitterness within your own spirit that only God can purge out. Okay? Okay. All right. And don't let me forget. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. So we talked about um, the importance and necessity of forgiveness and forgiving one another. We've covered it as a command, and there are no commands that are non-essential. Uh, we've covered that it's essential to follow the example of Christ. We've covered the fact that love calls for forgiveness, as hatred is the preventative to forgiveness. And we've covered our last point last week, um, forgiveness and forgiving one another is important and essential uh, in order for in order to be forgiven and reciprocate the mercy in which God has shown to us. Um, now we want to look at the any any questions, any feedback on those. We we had a a lot of uh, scripture text that we um, may or may not have gotten to, but we trust that you will uh, look at those on your own. If you have any questions or you need some clarification, please, please follow up with me or one of our brothers, and we'd be more than happy to assist you in getting clarification. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. um, say, say if someone did um, offend you or uh, sin against you and they've apologized, you know, and, and tried to make amends, as, as, you, as you've said, but um, in turn... Can y'all hear In turn... Can y'all hear me? Speak up. In turn, if you... If you Start over. Say that you have offended someone. You have offended someone. Yeah, you have offended someone, mm -hmm. and you've asked them for forgiveness. You've asked God to forgive you, but in turn, they still uh, hold it or say that they can't forgive you because they don't know the full story, even though you apologize for or ask for forgiveness for the things that you've done to them. But they say, I can't fully forgive you because I don't know the whole story so I'm not I can't just discharge it or permit it to be gone and they say it that way they say it that way okay well that's not forgiveness because you, you did you hear what you just said mm -hmm. you said that you you offended them mm -hmm. are y'all getting this you offended them you went to them you apologize and you asked for forgiveness and they said well I forgive you but then in the same breath, they said, well, I can't totally forgive you because I don't know the whole story. Then that's not forgiveness. Make sense? I mean, we have to, um, the, here's the thing. Here's, here's the hurtful thing. That the carnal man, we have to be honest. The carnal man can't get over sometimes. Even if I know the whole story, the creditor, still requires for me to forgive you. Now that's going to take some, some time. Now what, we, what we've really not got into the, the particulars and details of is, well, how do I forgive? Remember we said that there's one creditor in this whole situation. That's God. All right? We're all debtors. So the Holy Spirit didn't choose to use forgive us our debts just by happenstance or coincidence, we're all in debt. Guess how long for? Forever! Is that all right? We're all in debt. So when it comes to us and our relationship with one another, we're always going to be in debt to the real creditor, but we'll never be able to, even in our, in our relationship with one another, I'll never assume the position of creditor. I'll never assume the position of you owe me because I know that I owe. Does that make sense? We have yet to cover the, the parable of the one who owed the great amount 
to, to the king, but then the king forgave him the great amount, and then he went to the person who owed him a couple pennies and put him in jail. Now here's the thing that we fail to do, and, and this, is, this is crucial because I've been saying it, I've been saying it, I've been saying it. We look to the wrong individual for healing and for uh, resolution to our being able to overcome unforgiveness. In other words, I, we've been trained in society to think that I can't forgive, I can't get over it until you acknowledge it. And until you show me that you truly changed or whatever. That's, it's, not a, it's not really about that. It's about me going to the creditor to get help, not just getting forgiven, but now I also need to look to the creditor to say, I need you to help me with this situation. He's not only the creditor, he's the helper. He's the healer. He's everything. I don't need to look to you for nothing. The longer I keep my eyes on you, the longer I'm not going to permit it to let go or discharge. Are you getting that? Are we getting this? I have to take my eyes off of you so that I can deal with what's going on in me. All right? Turmoil is going on in me. Hatred and malice Vengeance is going on in me. And guess what? You can't, you can't help with that situation. No matter what you say, no matter how sorry you are, if you choose to be sorry, but there's nothing that you can do to help me with, with that healing process. I got to go to the real helper. And that's why many of us, we have things that are, that are undealt with from years, from, uh, from our childhood. And we're looking to people, we're looking to professionals to help us with something that only God can help us with. Yes. They said, I want to come to you and ask you for your forgiveness because I've offended you. And when I asked that person, well, what did you do? What, what are you apologizing for and need forgiveness from? They refused to tell me what it is that they wanted me to forgive them for. And I kind of didn't feel that I could truly forgive a person if I didn't know what the offense was. You can't. But, I'll, yeah. I'll answer that real fast. No, okay. you can't. So what I did was I told the person, I was like, well, I don't know what you've done and, and the extent of what you've done, but because I love you, I'll forgive you and just hope that you not do that behavior again because I felt that that person hadn't grown mature enough to fess up to what they did. I still don't know this day what that person did, but I kind of felt like, and I might be wrong for this, but I kind of felt like that person took the cowardly way out, if you will? To well, I, I would say that's not the biblical and scriptural spiritual way. Yeah. Because if I'm going to ask you for forgiveness, part of forgiveness is confessing my faults. I can't ask you to forgive me, and that's why many times, um, let me say it like this. And I'm going to say amen walls. Sometimes we'll come up here and we'll write out, if I offended anybody, forgive me. That's a blanket statement. I know exactly who I offended. Is that all right? But I'm, I'm, I'm taking a coward's way out to say, well, I don't know who it affected. I, I just, it, it, guess what, if I've done something, um, even if I offended the church, I'm just going to say, guess what? Church, I'm sorry for offending you. Yeah. Not if I offended anybody. 
Is that all right? If I've done something publicly, if, if, if Brother Mark is on Fox 8 News for, for doing whatever, I guess what? I offended you whether you know about it or not. So I'm just going to tell you, I offended you. And I'm sorry about it. Now, you may not forgive me, but I've done what God told me to do. Is that all right? And as long as I get his forgiveness, that's it. Is that all right? So in that scenario, you can't forgive somebody for something that have, they haven't confessed. That's incomplete. You, you should tell that person that. And hopefully, if they're a Christian, they should know that. But if they don't know, when you tell them, they'll know. Okay. That makes sense? All right. Yes. Then we go on. said the same thing back to me but we have a distance between each other you know and so it's a family member and uh, I think that is this me holding on to something hoping that things will get better or should I just stop like you said stop looking at that person which I'm not because I never see them anymore or, or just stay focused on the Lord uh, I felt I've done everything that I could do and my sister and, and everybody say, well, just leave it alone, just leave it alone. And I have, but it, it just hurts, that's all. Because there was a relationship with a uh, sister and sister-in-law relationship. Well, the only thing that you can control, and the Bible speaks about that in Romans chapter 12, um, live peaceably with all men as much as lies within you. Um, you can only control you. You can't control the other person. You understand what I'm saying? So... Uh, you can't make someone after you have resolved an issue, you can't make someone uh, begin to rebuild a relationship or things like that. You can only control your part in that. That's all. Now, Brother Mark, I'm a little confused. Okay, so now if a person offended me and, and some months or even some maybe a year or two has gone past and they come to me and says, Tangela, I'm uh, I want to apologize to you for offending you. I need to know why they did it, if they are apologizing to me, um, that they offended me, and I accept their apology and moved on. So I still need to know what they did in order to forgive them. If we're confessing our false You just said two things, sis. Okay. You just said two things. You said... If, if a, a person, person offended, offended you and it's been two years, so you already you obviously know that they have offended you, right? Yeah, I mean I know that they offended me and then they asked for forgiveness. So you're aware me. that they have offended you. You know what it is. You you need to listen to what you just said. What you just said was contradictory. Okay, so I'm saying that if okay, if it's if I didn't know and they come and ask for forgiveness, they need to tell me what they did in order for me for, to forgive them. How can you forgive them for something that you don't know? So, I'm, I'm still a little, if we're going to forgive, I need to know what was done in order for me to forgive that person? Obviously. That's what I'm asking. Absolutely. Because part of forgiveness, again, is confession. Confess your faults. How can but I... But I'm saying if this person is in the world and they confess my fault, I expect the world to do that to me. Okay, well, we're, we're talking about two different okay. things now. Yeah. We're talking about two different things. All but right. even, even still, on the, even on the basis of what forgiveness is, confession is a part of forgiveness. I there's there's no part. way around that. I got that part, but I'm just saying. But, but it doesn't sound like you got that part because I can't go and ask somebody for forgiveness if I don't confess to them what I've done. Does that make sense? Yes, it I, does. I cannot do that. I can't, I can't go to someone and ask them to forgive me for something, but I'm I'm going to withhold what I did. That's that's not that's not forgiveness. It's not. Okay. All right. It'll sink in. Thank you. Is everyone getting that? Okay. And we got to move on now. Please. Go ahead. Well, you said we have to move on, so I, I, I just kind of wanted to give an example of what came to my mind about that, what Tangela just said. In reference to Lucretia also, 
it, you know, it's almost like someone's calling you up saying, oh, I have a gift for you. And you would really like it, but I'm not going to give it to you. So, but I want you to be thankful for it. You know, I mean, it, it kind of sounds similar to me. You know, that you're you're asking me to take action to forgive you for something that I have no idea what it is. So, what let's let's just do it like this. Okay. Here, here's, let's look at it as far as us and God. Can can you ask God to forgive you without confessing your faults? There we go. That's it. We got we got it? Okay. All right. All right. We gotta move on. Um go ahead, Alan. Some elderly women, which is it's always feels funny about saying that now since I'm about their age now. But <laughs> But uh, uh, some really wise things, and one of the one of the choicest ones was there was one who, um, whenever she had didn't feel right about somebody, you know, there seemed to be something at odds with someone, she would go out of her way to start doing good things to them. Now it was interesting because one of my roommates was one of those one of those people. He he sort of had an edge to him and. She just found it very, you know, difficult getting along with him. So she started doing good things for him, you know, uh, making things for him, giving him stuff. And they ended up becoming really good friends. Uh, and so I'm talking about the healing part. Understand that this is not just, well, okay, I forgive them. I, I can check that off. It's about reconciliation. When there has been a break, when something bad has happened between people, you can't go back to where it was, but you can create something better. I, I did that with my best friends. We had a trip and it just went horrible. We were all mad at one another. Well, when we got back, we all realized our relationships were not that deep. And, and that was a turning point. But it was recognizing that, and then it takes action. It just it isn't a feeling. It's when you, you make a decision to start doing what's right, to start doing something good. And so anybody who's, if you got caught against a brother or sister, get something, try, work towards reconciliation, work towards creating a great relationship with them, not just letting it go. And that, that's impossible without God. When we first defined, to defined forgiveness, what was it? What part of speech was it? English major, what part of speech was it? It was a verb. Amen. All right. So it's action, right? It was action. So it's just not about a mental assent. Okay, I've done something in my mind. And that's where we're, we're trying to really get out of the, the traditional world thinking of forgiveness. Okay? Because we think if I've let it alone, and that's why when we first began, we focused on what forgiveness is not. It's not just simply ignoring those who have wronged us. It's not just refusing to strike blow for blow. It's not just ignoring the sin altogether. It's not just putting the person on probation. It's not those things. It's being able to truly allow God to have his way with me to be able to truly have a change of mind. When you really look at forgiveness, forgiveness is really now changing your mind to have the mind of Christ, to now have compassion on that individual. Now that's spiritual. Can you look at an individual who wronged you, who abused you, who did you wrong, and have compassion on them? Because that's what God has had on us. That's why he said on the cross, that's why he said, forgive them. Why? For they know not what they do. He didn't just say that. He had compassion to understand these people spiritually are destitute. They don't know what they're doing. They have no clue. And I feel for them, not as God, but as a man. I got compassion on them as a man. That's why he says, Father, forgive them. 
give them some space and time to come to themselves to recognize what they've done. And on the day of Pentecost, when the gospel was preached, what happened? They were pricked in their heart. They recognized what they did. Because beforehand, they didn't know. And there's some people who have wronged us and had no idea, spiritually speaking, what they were doing. And that's why it's important for us, you know, we, we walk around and William talked about doing the symposium, the fact that there is an enemy. We, we have to understand that we're dealing with spirits, y'all. Spirits. Okay? And guess what? We're all susceptible. Have you ever noticed we all don't act the same all the time? Some weeks you're like, what's, what's up with Shannon? What's going on with her? Hey Amen, Halo. Yes, I got your back. Yes. And we know how, how nice and kind Shannon is, but sometimes Shannon... Nah. Mm -hmm. I can take it. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? You know, you know, and this is what family does. That's why I say we have to get out of this, this, this acquaintance mode and get to a, we're a family. Whether you like me or not, I'm your family. And I ain't gonna always act right. But you gotta love me anyway. Is that all right? Sometimes you're going to have to love the hell up out of me. I didn't curse. Y'all heard what I said. Is that all right? My wife does that to me all the time. I come home just looking to pick a fight. And she's like, no, Satan, we ain't going there today. Mm -hmm. She starts singing, I get more mad. <laughs> then I just give up and say, okay, okay, baby. But that's what we do when, we, when we're hurting, when we're frustrated, when we're whatever we're going through, we want someone else to experience it. We want to transfer, we want to project it on somebody instead of going to the one who can heal us. Amen. We all need an exorcism one time a day at least. Hey Amen. Are y'all are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And I know some of y'all out there. Oh, I never need that. You need it now. You need it right now. Okay. Now, in our last ten minutes, the last point is an important point at the bottom of the page. Uh, the importance of forgiving others. In order to walk with God. Okay. It's important for you and I, essential for you and I to forgive one another in order to walk with God. Okay? Let's look at 1 John chapter 1. First John chapter 1. And we're going to start with verse 5 for the context. Remember, we've been talking about the importance of posture. Remember that? Posture, your mindset and your attitude. Okay? Before we go to God in prayer to ask God, he said, I want you to forgive. Before you come to me in prayer, forgive. That's, that's your posture. That's your attitude. Well, you say, well, they haven't come and asked for forgiveness yet. That don't make no never mind. Your posture toward them has been that whatever they have done, you've discharged. But you, you need to have rebuked and let them know what they've done. And, and that's the tough part because sometimes the devil uh, holds us up and keeps us 
uh, stifled from going to a person and telling them what they've done. And before you know it, it's been two, three, four, five, six months, and now it's out of hand. That's why when, when something happens, is I've learned, and we've learned in our classes, it's better to nip something in the bud immediately. Don't wait. All right? Don't wait for it to grow. Don't wait for it to get out of hand. Okay? Try to take care of it as soon as possible so that the enemy can't get an advantage in the situation. Okay? 1 John chapter 1, starting with verse number 5. Someone read that. Yes. Yes. God is light, and in him is no darkness at all, right? Okay? And he had just talked about, it's important that we know, in verse number 3 and 4, he just talked about fellowship, the fact that they had true fellowship, and he's imploring them, listen, we want you to have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and the Son. So we're talking about true fellowship, true, true communion, true, true sharing. Is that all right? God, you know what God wants most from us? Intimacy, an intimate relationship. That's what he wants the most. That's what he wants most, an intimate relationship. And that's where the struggle is because we struggle in this life with putting, being preoccupied with the, the things of this life, which impedes and, and, and uh, comes between us really having an intimate relationship with God. We're so busy doing any and everything, and we really don't have an intimate relationship with God. Because if we truly had an intimate relationship with God, we'll be on our way to healing. Relationship is everything. I can't get help from someone that I don't have a relationship with. Okay? Read. If we say that we have fellowship with him. If we say we do. Here's the problem. And walk in darkness. And walk in darkness. We lie. Now darkness can be my own way of thinking. I can still be conformed to this world, like we talked about on Wednesday. Right? Go ahead. We lie and do not practice the truth. We lie and do not practice the truth. Read. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, mm -hmm. we have fellowship with one another. Yes. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So if we walk in the light, if we truly, because of that intimate relationship, cast all of our care on him, being able to forgive someone, that's a care. Would you agree? Is that a care or is that a burden that you can hold by yourself? Absolutely not. And he's told us, cast it on me because I care for you. God doesn't want us to hold unforgiveness. He doesn't want us to hold that. He wants us to cast it on him. That's for him to carry, not for us. But we can't do that if we're not walking together with him. So it's important for us to forgive one another in order to walk together with God. Is that all right? Any questions, any feedback? Okay, now let's turn to 1 John 4, 20 and 21. First John 4, 20 and 21. Now here, here's, a, we know this verbatim, many of us, right? Yes. If someone says I love God. If someone says I love God, we are here today because we say we love God, right? Yes, yes. And hates his brother. And hates his brother. Now, we are here saying we love God, but is there anyone we got some issues with? That's right. Don't raise your hand. God knows. All right? Yes, he is a liar. He is a what? A liar. So some of us up in here are liars. Mm -hmm. Amen, somebody. That's right. And we need help with being a liar. Yes. You say, well, I ain't told no lie. You don't have to tell a lie. You can live a lie. That's right, amen. Many lies are practiced before they're told anyway. That's so true. Pretending to be someone that you're not. Mm -hmm. Read. For 
he who does not love his brother whom he has seen. That's an action word, right? Yes. For he who does not love his brother. You see, we can deny him not just by what we say, but what we do. You see, I can say that, you know what, I love God and, and I forgive him my brother too, but I ain't going to show them no love. And the first opportunity they, they slip and slide, I'm going, inside, I'm going to be rejoicing. Mm -hmm. Read. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, mm -hmm. how can he love God whom he has not seen? How can we love God whom we've not seen when I can't stand you and I see you every week? You see how we need his help? Mm -hmm. yeah. Again, Forgiveness is not natural. It's not a natural thing. It's spiritual. And we need God's help with it, just like we need every, his help with everything else. Remember, if you don't remember nothing else from today's lesson, Jesus said in John 15, without me, you can do nothing. And that means absolutely nothing. Amen. Okay? Last one, Micah chapter 6, Micah chapter 6 and verse 8. That's Old Testament, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, somewhere around there. Get one of our children to come in here and quote it. Micah chapter 6. Again, we're talking about in order to walk with God. Micah chapter 6, and for the context, let's start with verse number 6. And if someone has like a uh, New King James or, or different translation to help us to understand, because I want us to get the fact that the context is speaking, if you have a new King James, that's fine. But here's the context. The context is they're out of line with God and they're trying to think of a way on their own understanding to appease God and get back in line with him, okay? That's the context of what we're about to read. Are y'all getting that? Okay? Go ahead, start with verse six, somebody. Wherewith shall I come before the Lord? Wherewith shall I come before the Lord? And bow myself down, and bow myself before the high God. Mm -hmm. Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves of a year old? Now, the per they're talking, they're leaning to their own understanding. How am I going to make myself right with God? Shall I come with burnt offerings, with calves of a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams? Go ahead and read, sis. Verse 7. Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Now watch this. Shall I give my firstborn? Now they're talking about human sacrifice. Uh -huh. Lord have mercy. You know the Lord don't require that. All right? Go ahead. Shall I give my firstborn for my transgressions, the fruit of my body, for the sins of my soul. Mm -hmm. Now, verse 8 is what God had told them to do. He has showed thee, O man, what is good. He has already, here's, here's what the Holy Spirit is saying through Micah. Micah, through the Holy Spirit through Micah is saying, God has already showed you what to do. He's told you what to do. What is, what's he told you? Read. What does the Lord require of thee? Mm -hmm. But to do justly and to love mercy. To do what? To love mercy. To do justly? To do justly and to love mercy. To love mercy. And to walk. To love mercy. To love mercy. Amen. To love mercy. Is that natural? It's not natural to love mercy. But God is rich in mercy. Is that all right? And that's the reason we're all here today, because of God's mercy. Now, we want mercy, but do we want to give mercy? To love mercy, not to like mercy, 
Not to be okay with mercy, but to love mercy, right? And to do what? And to walk humbly with thy God. And to walk humbly with thy God. In order to walk humbly with God, I gotta love some mercy. I gotta demonstrate some mercy. I gotta reciprocate and demonstrate to others what's been demonstrated to me. We gotta stop. Here's what we're gonna do. Again, we have two more lessons, and then we'll turn it back over to the normal Sunday school. We'll be in uh, Attitudes, the Heart of a God's Child. We have the books in already, okay? But in our last two lessons, next week we'll be on the back of your page, the back of your handouts. We'll tackle Attitudes Towards Forgiveness because that's the huge issue. It's not necessarily uh, the things that have been done, it's my attitude about it. So I, I really can't resolve things until I change my attitude. Does that make sense? I, I can know what God requires, but it's going to take an attitude adjustment for me to actually implement in my life what he requires. Does that make sense? That's what repentance is all about. Repentance is a change of what? Attitude, heart. Okay? And then to end, we're going to dissect Luke 17, the verses 1 through 6. That will tie everything that we've talked about together. Prayerfully, that will provide us with the tools from the word of God to be on our way to healing, to be on our way to recovery. All right? Whether we've, again, whether we've been offended whether we have offended or whether we're in a state where we can't forgive ourselves. Because when we can't forgive ourselves, guess what we do? We act out. We do things that we would not ordinarily do. Okay? So we'll stop right here. We're going to ask Brother Clark to pray for us. We're going to ask all the men, please, all the men, let's not hesitate. Let's get to the back so that we can get started on time today, okay? Okay?